So really I'm into the final stages now which is doing the clear coat which in this case is going to be uh, epoxy. Um, you can see I've done a couple of extra layers just in slightly different shades. This one's got a bit more pink, this one's a bit more green and silver. Um, what I've done to these layers since last time is just attached a piece of insulation tape to the front and it's looped over and that's just to protect really any drips running down to the edge of the bill. Um, it's just important that that's sealed right up to the edge as hard as you can. These are on paper clips and this is a, a coating drying rig I suppose you'd call it. Um, and what this is slowly doing is rotating these layers. What I've used for this is a, a disco ball or a mirror ball motor here. Um, this is attached to the mains. It runs at about one and a half revolutions per minute. Um, these are available from eBay um, in the region. I think I bought this in the region of about £10. I've got it screwed onto a, a piece of 6x1 uh, timber and then just screwed onto a long length. This is something like 2x2. Uh, at this end here, I've clamped, you'll see, a piece of scrap timber on. Um, this means I can move it up and down and also add tension. And here what I've got is a screw eye, a link and then a swivel. Um, if you had a bull bear and swivel that would be far better but this is just a standard swivel. Um, so that's my rig. Um, what this means is when I'm coating the layers I can have access to them. I haven't got to avoid any moving parts. It's just simpler for me to use. So the resin I'm using to coat with is Envirotex Light. It's exactly the same uh, as I used to put the base coat on epoxy resin. Obviously you're going to need some gloves, uh, a paper brush to apply, this is just a disposable brush. Uh, try and get something that doesn't lose too many bristles. Uh, for mixing, um, what I'm using is a, is a cup on a stick and what I'm going to do is put another cup inside it which the resin goes into and this is kind of a dense little um, roll of metal. Um, so what I'm going to do is roll this basically round. I'll show you what this does. It mixes it without adding too much air and also uh, because it's running on the side it peels away the epoxy from the edge and stops it you having areas of unmixed epoxy basically. Um, a blow lamp, I'll show you what we're going to use that for later. This runs off cigarette lighter fluid, um, propane, I think it's a propane butane mix basically. But this is going to be used for breaking the surface tension and removing bubbles later. So once I've got my gloves on I can measure and mix basically which I'm going to try uh, 2.5mm of A and B. So I can put my, my little roller ball bit bearing in there um, and that's it basically. I'm going to do that for a couple of minutes. Um, you can if you want attach a cordless drill and just do it reasonably slowly. So that's had about three minutes um, I'd say it was fully mixed. Um, I'm just going to take my paintbrush and just flick out any loose hairs which it seems to be alright this one. So it's just a case of what, what, what I'm applying here is I suppose what's called a flood coat. Um, so it's like applying a reasonable amount of varnish um, but we're still going to give this layer two coats so it's just basically spread it on evenly at a reasonable thickness it's hard to describe what that thickness is I suppose just be aware of any hairs coming off the brush um, when you're doing this and also don't overcoat the eyes the uh, wire eyes I mean, these are pretty straightforward and easy to coat. Really the areas that are the problems around the bill. Um, and what I try to do is not get too much on the bill, but let it naturally build up through the tension of the material. Another difficult place to do is between the, um, the bill and the front of the layer. And the easiest way I found is just to run basically up 
Um, that's why that piece of PVC tape is there. It's just to stop the end of the bill getting the coat in as well. And what I'll do is I'll take the excess off the front in that gap in a minute. So you can see that there's still, well you might be able to see, but there's still bubbles on the layer and that's not a great shake so I'm going to take them off in a minute. Just wipe that section through again and take the excess off. It's difficult obviously with clear materials to see if it's all coated. The way I do it is to look sideways at the layer um, and, and sometimes that's easier because the, the way the light hits it shows things up a bit more easily than when you're looking straight on. So I'm going to do the other two layers. That looks okay, reasonable. Um, but I'll move on to the other two layers and come back. So I've coated my two other layers and, I'm, and it's been a, probably about five minutes. Um, I'm going to come back to this layer and just check over it. Uh, I can still see that there's some bubbles. What happens if you leave it for a bit, a lot of these bubbles will just naturally pop themselves. But I'm going to go to the blowtorch now. Um, and what I'm going to do is just literally waft it over the layer. You don't really want to hold it on the layer for any length of time. Um, but I can see as I do that, the bubbles are popping. And it's part heat but also largely CO2. It's actually breaking the surface tension. Uh, again, the, the problem areas are often around the eyes. Um, and in that gap at the front of the layer, uh, between the lip and the front. So I'm going to keep checking at an angle just to see. Um, if you've got any dust or hairs, what you can do with them is just brush them to an end and remove them basically. But if you don't, they're obviously going to be set in there and they're probably going to puncture the, the next coat that goes on. Um, yeah, it's looking okay. I'll go off and do the other layers and come back. So that's the first coat done. Um, it looks pretty even. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any dust or missing spots on it. Um, but this is only really the first coat. I'm probably as it goes tacky overnight, you'll, I'll see tomorrow any bits that are missing. I've got quite a bit over there, so probably two mil instead of two and a half of each um, will do the job. Uh, really, overnight, if you're going to leave that, you need to cover it um, because any dust will settle on it. And what I'm just going to use is basically a piece of cardboard that sits over the top. I've made a little plastic window here uh, out of a piece of file divider. Uh, just so I can see that it's still turning. Um, so that's it. We'll leave that and come back to it for a second coat tomorrow. So it's the next day, um, the morning, probably about 15 hours on from when I finished with the layers. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick look over them. Um, and the coat looks pretty good. Um, I can see, still, still see some ripples there where it's trying to fill in things. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any patches where it's blank. Um, it just looks like the resin's been stretched a little in places. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up another batch basically and do the same. Um, you can see my I'll wait there, I'm just going to peel this resin off the waste. Um, I don't really need to sand these. Uh, the resin takes about three days to fully harden at this temperature. So probably within the first 18 hours, um, the next coat will bond to the 
previous coat. And really if I was to sand these there's a good chance I would break through the resin coat that I've put on uh, and scratch the paintwork below. So I'm just going to apply it straight over. Exactly the same as yesterday. So it's back with the Envirotex light. This time I'm going to mix up probably about uh, two mil of each. Uh, you need slightly less and also I had a bit too much last time. So same quantities of each. Back inside my mixing pot. Um, my little weight, I let, let the resin drain off it last night. So it has got a coating but it's okay. And then back to mixing, same as last time. So I've finished mixing my resin um, and I'm going to get a, got my gloves on obviously, I'm going to get another paintbrush, just flick off any bits and then again just apply an even varnish coat, which you'll find on out is it goes on quite a lot easier because it's got a thicker coat underneath. I can see around the eyes that the resin has filled in the little gap at the back of the eyes and made a little bulge so they look a bit more natural. And also around the lip it's built up. Um, so that's really going to hold the lip securely in place. The super glue there was just a, a temporary. So I'll go on and do the other couple of layers and then come back to this one. So it's about five minutes later and I'm back with the old blowtorch. Um, again, I'm just going to go over and pop the bubbles. So it's just a case of whacking. And also, I'm looking at an angle across this way uh, for any bits I've mixed, missed. Um, when you put two clear coats on, it's kind of quite difficult to see and the only way I found to really see is to look sideways at it, the raking light or, or just in profile to see if anything's sticking up or dipping in the resin coat. Um, it looks pretty good. Um, what I've done is overfill one of these eyes though and what I'm going to do is just poke a rod through um, and then just wipe off the excess and bring it back a few times. What that should do is just clear the eye. Again, put the uh, take your weight out of your resin and put your cardboard lid back over the top, stop any dust getting over it. Job done. So it's about 48 hours on since the last coat of epoxy. Um, I, I stopped the, the layers spinning after about 8 hours and just left them on the rack. Um, I would say they're almost, um, almost completely cured but still could do with another day. Impatient as I am I went and stuck some hooks on this one and took it down the lake for a test. Um, which it swam absolutely amazed. I'm, I'm really quite chuffed with the action uh, on this layer. So it really is a case of just fitting some hooks and uh, what I'm using here are these 9626 uh, VMC perm steel trebles. I'm going to fit two of these, these are a size 6 um, and I'm using 6mm stainless steel splits. And what I've got here is a pair of uh, split pliers, split ring pliers. You can manage without but Uh, when I've tried that I've often ended up with hooks in my fingers. So I normally put the hook on first and then just these uh, split rings are tested I think to £65 um, that's one So there's the finish there really. Um, one of the last jobs to do is actually tune them. Um, 
Yeah. So what I've done here is put a um, just a link on and a piece of monofilament. I normally fish for pike um, with traces. But if you're going to tie line directly to the eye, you need to probably do a rapala knot um, just to give it some movement. So what I'm just looking for here, the only thing I'm looking for is whether it runs straight um, or whether it runs on its side. And looking at that, that's running straight. You can see it's got the wobble starting up. Normally if it needs adjusting, what you'll see is the layer will swim probably on its side slightly. So you'll see one side more than the other. Or it'll just veer off. Um, but that's not. So I'd say that's pretty perfect. If it does swim off to the side, then what you do is you take a pair of pliers, um, clamp hold the front eye and bend it towards the direction slightly that it's going. You don't need huge bends, just slight. Uh, but I can already feel the wobble through the line. Um, it's quite hard to judge um, the action of the lure from this test uh, because it's not how you would normally fish with a lure, um, pulling 18 inches of uh, six pound mono. Uh, the angle uh, of your retrieve would be a lot different. And also the depth of water, this is touching the bottom, this layer, so the action is being taken out of it. So you need to get down the river really and give it a proper test, down the river or lake.